Ooh, better see two, better see day on two by the river. We're talking about Copa de Oro as we have our rosters announced here. We got some unique things to talk about with that. Of course, we have a Chicago match that we need to talk about. What a wild, wild one over in Soldier Field. And of course, we're going to preview our matchup this Saturday on 4th of July weekend against the pesky Nashville SC. Hello, Nashville. Ladies and gentlemen, do not go anywhere because you do not want to miss this episode of Duke by the River. And let's get this started, guys. Eh, duck! And that is right. Welcome, everyone, to Do By the River, the show where we follow everything Philadelphia Union, brought to you by Philly Sports Network. Before we move forward, what is going on, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok? Welcome on into Do By the River. We got a lot to get to. Do not forget to like the live and subscribe to Ed Barcelo Philly's YouTube channel. This is where we put all of the visual portions of Do By the River. And of course, you can listen to Do By the River wherever you stream podcasts through PSN Radio. That is all on Apple. Apple, Google, and Spotify, definitely, definitely, definitely hit that subscribe button. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you guys my expert in dupers. Let's start off with my man, Mr. Zach Lobasso, who is got he's got a little break with the Euros not being on today. Zach, what's uh, going on, my man? Got that nice well, Arizona tan. Oh, yeah, good one. Good one. No, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I bathed in sunscreen every morning, so I, I got no color. Um, but yeah, it's you it's and Jim good. Curtin. Yeah, Wait, hold exactly. on, like, Zach. Like, like you know, like Charlie Theron in uh, the Huntsman, the Huntsman. He like literally took a bath full of it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I filled the bathtub up. Actually, we didn't. Have, no one showered the whole week because the bathtub oh, was. Full hey. of so <laughs> I was just every every morning. I would just I would just soak like up to my nose, and and then you know I'd go with the face sunscreen the rest of the way. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was it was a good week out in Arizona, um, and I, I'm just glad to be back uh, with the with the Union lads talking did, about. Did you get a training? Did you get a training session in with Phoenix Rising and Diplo? Uh, I did not. I did not. I did not. Unfortunately, <laughs> but um, maybe next time. Maybe next. Time. Maybe next time. It's good to have you back, Zach. All right, let's uh, let, let's move on to he's a little he's coming off of his little fame high from this weekend, and he's back <laughs> from Chicago. He had all of his Chicago dogs and whatnot. Please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Justin, that bald guy on TV, Freiburg. What's up, baby? Welcome back. Thank you. It was a uh, it was a great weekend. Uh, you know, a little rainy. Apparently, right. I hit like the, the the weekend in Chicago where it was like either overcast or nothing but rain. Uh, no, I I had I, th- honestly that was a, a a great trip. You know, I saw a few okay. friends. Went to the White Sox game. Went to the Chicago right. Red right. Stars right. game. You know, it 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 was. I met met Sarah Spain. Like it was a great time. Went to the you know went to the Union game. It was, that was a great birthday, by the way. Thank you to everyone who wished me a happy birthday, and everyone who yes, I got all your messages. I got all your texts. <laughs> Trust me, my phone my phone was dot dead because I like you know I kept wishing happy birthday, and man, my phone at halftime like off the hook. We're not off the hook for like 5 minutes responding to people. Yes, that was me on TV. Yet what other bald guy with a headband <laughs> in Chicago? And a uni kit and a bi yeah, kit, kit or by you. Like, so we were like we were like diagonal from the yeah, you know, which by the way, that field looked the Soldier Field is amazing. The field itself was was waterlogged. It was it was a horrible but and we'll get into that, but no, it was a fun time. And uh I'm looking forward to to talking about it because Boy, it was it was wild, is what that game was for a three three draw. That game was wild. Uh, I I bet we'll definitely get to that one as well. Uh, last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my brother Tim Discount Jim <laughs> and Loving Goot. T- listen, Tim, the hoodie looks good on you, my man. I must say, yeah, I I wasn't sure if I was gonna buy it, and then Jim rocked it, and I was like, all right, it's a good Sold. color for gingers. Like I'm, I'm there. <laughs> like I I can do it. Like it's all good, you know. He's got that influence now. Everything that he wears on the I side, know he is, is an influence. Now. He doesn't know this. Instantly pulled out in the store. Yeah, now I got my Halloween costume for life. I'm good. Yeah, yeah you him on the show. He's a he's a legitimate influence. We got to ask him like what the next style trend is going to be. Do we yeah. got to have the game. We all we need is that good stern celebration, kind of after like that Quinn celebration. Yeah, just the. 
Just little, that, just that. You got a little fist bump and then the clap, the golf clap. I love yeah. it. I love he it. Uh, it's got that fire. Or, or like when we're singing "Happy Birthday" after the uh, in the halftime of the Columbus match, and he's walking off, st- face stone cold. Like he does. Like yeah, I don't care about my birthday. Stone we're cold, trying to get three points. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely awesome guys thank you so much we're, we're gonna have a fun episode as always here of course before we get into chicago and nashville which is why everyone is here uh, i wanted to talk about uh gold cup um it is coming it is literally right here um of course a lot of these rosters are built from a lot of you know mls a lot of lower i want to say lower level but maybe not not the top a quality uh, players that teams would pick but for the USMNT, it's very interesting. I, what I want to do real quick is just go over the roster. So goalkeepers, you got Brad Guzan, Sean Johnson, Matt Turner. Defenders, you got George Bello, uh, Reggie Cannon, Shaq Moore, Devon Pines, Miles Robinson, James Sands, Sam Vines, Walker Zimmerman in the midfield. You got K- uh, Kayla Acosta, John Luca Busio, Sebastian Leggett, Earl Don, Eric Williamson, eh. Uh, uh, Tim, don't get mad at me. Jackson Ewell, uh, forwards. You got Pat, uh, Paul Ariel, uh, Daryl DK, uh, Nicholas Guy. Uh, you guys are going to tell me about that one. Gio Kachini. I, I think. I think it's how you say Kashi. Thank Nicholas, you, guys. Nicholas, Nicholas Nyoki. We'll go with Nicholas yeah. Nyoki. I like that. G- Give me the Nyoki. Gio Kini. There you go. Gia. Matthew Hop, uh, Jonathan Lewis, and uh, Yazi Zardes. So, really, the from right off the bat, what you guys can notice, no uh, union players on there, which is very surprising. Of course, Leon Flack had the uh, the the invitation to the preliminary roster. Of course, he didn't make it, uh, which he talked about in today's presser. He's in a good good place, and he's actually he's very motivated, which I loved I loved hearing as well. Um, and of, of course, no Brandon and no Mark as they are preparing for their Euro seasons. Um, but yeah, so and then of course with Jamaica, we have uh, I won't go over that whole roster, but you got Corey Burke, you got um, Alice Powell, and of course Andre Blake all over there. So, um, from one side, we expected to have a union player with the U.S. team, but then we have three with 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 the reggae boys. The reggae boys are well represented by Philadelphia, which we love to see. Um, we'll start with Tim today. Uh, your thoughts on just you know if you the USMNT or you know the reggae boys with with those three uh, getting called up as well? Yeah, um, honestly, I, I don't hate this roster for the USA. Uh, I I think it's a good test for these MLS players uh, who are going to be playing in a big tournament. And usually, you know, we would see some of the bigger names here, but obviously, with Nations League being just a bit ago and having coming off the high of winning that. And then also with World Cup qualifying coming in the fall, uh, you want to see more from possible depth players that can help with World Cup qualifying. And I think that's why you see an, an MLS heavy roster here. Uh, we we talked about it in our group chat. Uh, Jackson Ewell. Uh, Your not, favorite player. Not my favorite player. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's in honestly the way that Burr Halter plays his system, he'll, he'll probably start and I'll probably have – a lot to say uh, about that. And honestly, yes, uh, as Reese points out here, I, I would have loved to see Leon Flock get the roster spot over Jackson Ewell. I think we've seen enough of Jackson Ewell and what he brings. And I'm not going to go what down. He doesn't bring. Hole. And yeah, I'm not going to go down that type of hole. I'm Give not it to us, it. Tim. I'm not going to do I mean, no, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Gonna do it. Uh, yeah. Uh, but either way, uh, it's a good squad for the USA here. Uh they, I mean, obviously, they should get out of their group. Uh, it's not that strong of a group. I know there's still uh, teams getting finalized as well, like this coming week, which is it's crazy uh, yeah. to, to see that happening. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, this U.S. side, you know, should be able to to go on a run and, and show what they have here. Uh, as for Jamaica, uh, obviously, we know our Union boys are are going to be there. Yes. Uh, play Andre Blake is you know still the captain, I believe, for for that side. Um, and I believe Jim mentioned today that uh, they're trying to see if uh, they can stay for Red Bull. Red Bull is next Thursday. That's the next game after Nashville. Um, so, so we'll see that, you know, this weekend could be the last we see of, of Corey Burke, Andre Blake, and Alvis Powell for a while. Uh, not that I think Powell's going to start. I, I think Baizo will come back in. But, uh, yeah, it, you know, it's a good opportunity for those guys to show out for their national teams. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what comes of it with it. Justin, can I ask you, you, you know how crazy I'm going to get watching Leon Bailey feeding Corey Burke? 
<laughs> How you feeling about this, man? Uh, you know, it's it's interesting. It, I mean, the Jamaica roster. I'm sure it's not anything you wouldn't expect. I think depending on how the formation lines up, we talked about it pre-show. I think realistically they're more of a four-two-three-one team, um, and that that's the case. I could definitely see them kind of flip-flopping uh, Bailey and Corey between the wing and the striker. They kind of both played at on their side, you know, up top or on the, on the wing for the national team. So it wouldn't surprise me either way. Um, for this U.S. team, uh, it, it's an it's a it's a decent roster. I'll, I will give it that much for an MLS heavy roster, which is what we expected. It, it's it's a it's a good roster. Um, I think this is definitely Matt Turner's uh, goal. I think there's no question. Um, Sean Johnson's probably your backup, and you brought in Old Man River. You know, embarrassment to all balls, Brad Guzan. <laughs> just because he's an MLS goalie, like Tim Howard's retired, so you're not you're not bringing a, you're not bringing Nick Ramondo anymore as a third goalie. So you had to bring someone um, on the back line. I know Reggie Cannon is in mainly to kind of give as a showcase, uh, because from what I've heard, uh, the whole thing with Leal fell through because the owner of of the, the Portuguese team he was in Boa Vista. Uh, who is also the majority owner of Leal, he sold his 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 shares in Boa Vista. So that pipeline is kind of dead. Um, so he's that move fell through, but if, I've still heard a lot of chatter about Reggie. So I definitely think he'll be playing. Um, I, I do love though that Atlanta fans are 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 mad that they have they have to give up uh, Miles Robinson and George Bello because you know, they were so happy when they didn't have to give him up for the Olympics, even though Miles Robinson actually might have helped, um, even though the defense wasn't the issue there. Uh, I think Walker Zimmerman is definitely one of your starting center backs. Um, as for the other, I could definitely see Miles Robinson. Um, I think they'll rotate kind of like they do with, you know, with John Brooks as the main focal point to see who pairs well next to Zimmerman. If Zimmerman has a good, good tournament, I can see him maybe pushing his way back. He's kind of that guy that I've always liked as a bit of a depth option, but it's kind of fallen down due to the rise of, you know, Chris Richards, due to the rise a bit at times of Aaron Long. Obviously, Mark McKenzie started to play a bit better. Miles Robinson's there. So you have a lot of younger talent that started to come through. Um, that midfield, uh, listen, S- Sebastian Legette is, is Berhalter's guy. And like him or not, he actually serves a pretty good role. I'd rather have him as a veteran on the team than like Michael Bradley. Let's be honest. Like Legette's not going to do any one thing amazing, but he'll do several things well. Which for one of the guys in the midfield, that's really all you need in that four three three. I'm not very high on Busio. Uh, I've I've made it very clear. I don't think he's worth all the chatter. He has good flashes, but I haven't seen. A lot consistently, but you know everyone hypes him up. So this will be his tournament. To see if he really gets any time. And yeah, you know, Tim's favorite player, Jackson Yule. I don't know if he's supposed to be the McKinney-like role or he's supposed to be more of an attacking player with Legit in that midfield. I have a feeling he's more of the McKinney. Slash I, honestly, I think he's supposed to be a player that could come in when Tyler Adams can't play, and that's just not. That's Which, but it. yeah, he's he's he, he, I don't think he has the kind of distribution that Adams does, but he, he does he, when he passes backwards. He does yeah. when he passes. <laughs> he's he, for the for the Gold Cup. He's serviceable. Um, the forwards is where it gets really interesting. I, you know, my feelings on Giassi Zardes. is I'm not really. Uh, he's not a he's a good MLS striker. I just don't love him at the international level. Um, I I hope Matthew Hoppy does get some time. Um, I have seen stuff. You know, we have we have seen stuff from Giacchini, who showed in a few friendlies, showed pretty well in those friendlies. Um, so that'll be interesting. It, it's probably going to be a bit of a, a toss up at, on the forward line. Um, but I mean, for the most part. Who knows how this, this roster is going to shape up? 
in terms of you know starting there's certain positions obviously that'll be pretty set in stone um but no, i'm i'm interested it, it, it the the gold cup is definitely one of those tournaments that doesn't get a lot of respect even though it's our version of the, of the euros like it's, it's every 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 continent has that thing i think the nations league kind of took a bit of a the luster away from the gold cup itself um but no i'm 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 excited it should be a really interesting uh interesting tournament As I'm muted, there, Zach. That was like, uh, it was like on there before we move on. Again. It yeah. happened again. You got anything to add there, Zach? Um, so, uh, as opposed to Justin, I think I do like Busio a lot. Um, I think he has, um, I, I think he's going to be a guy that impresses in the tournament if he get, is given time, and um, it'll be very good for both himself and um, Kansas City's wallet if, uh, <laughs> If he does perform, uh, as I think he will, if he gets time, and if he um, has a bad tournament, he could everyone could shut up about it. That's a hey, fair enough, but until listen, he's going to get the move to Europe either way. I know. I just, um, I, I, so, so when he when he's put in a squad with players that uh, of that caliber, uh, caliber, I think that'll really end up showing where he's at. Um, and then in terms of the front line, I would be interested to see how they're going to play it. Like, do they go to a 4-4-2? I know that Burhalter's 4-3-3 guy all the way through. <laughs> ride but, or die. Ride or die. And I don't know if that means maybe we could see uh, Matthew Hoppy go, like maybe play a little right wing while DK goes in the middle and then Ariel on the left or something like that or vice versa. I believe the that, I believe that Burhalter spoke today and said that he envisions Hoppy being more of a winger in the system rather okay. than a yeah. yeah, I didn't yeah, I, I didn't that. He's, he's he's good enough for a, I did not hear that. Game. So so that's that's good. Uh that's good cuz I I think that would be a very uh very dynamic front line um with those three. Uh Paul, Paul Ariel obviously the least dynamic of those three kind of just go down the wing <laughs> cross it into Daryl DK. But he still um, gets the job done every time he's, he plays for the US. Yeah. yeah. He's he's fast and he can serve balls in and that like that's really all you need him to do with those two other ones up top with him. Um and I mean other than that like uh hopefully Acosta plays at the the six instead of Yule. Uh that would be really nice. Um even though I don't like Acosta either, I like him more than Yule. So. I, I, I would take him over over Yule. I think he's had yeah. a resurgence in the last yeah. year or so. Yeah, it's yeah, for sure, for sure. Um and then in terms of um oh uh to answer Craze's question too, I hope I hope to God it's Matt Freeze that fills in for Blake. I I like I hope so. Um, I hope no nope, random thing. We'll that's definitely talk about. It. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. So I really uh, am looking forward to see Blake play for um, Jamaica again. Um, Leon Bailey had a great season, so I mean they could be an exciting team to watch. Um, I'm sure they'll sit in and counter, and with Leon Bailey running that front line, whether it's up top, which I mean we've seen crazier things from national teams playing players out of position. Um, or he's playing winger, but either way, he's got pace and he can finish. And if Corey Burke's up there with him, I mean, it's a dangerous front line to be caught up with on the counter. So they're definitely going to be a team to look out for. Absolutely here. Um, yeah, I believe that uh, we'll, Matt Freeze will get most of it. I mean, he's kind of, he's, I mean, technically the future here. I mean, we know we are going to get with Ben Dick, but don't guys do not forget Greg Rand. Just can she, 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 she. Uh, wait, are we surprised that Matt Freeze didn't get called up to the Gold Cup, or was not he not particularly, even? Particularly, I think no. this was one of those like. I mean, dude, they called up Sean Johnson. Yeah, but I would at this point like I feel like Sean Johnson being there is just it's a consolation because like yeah he's not really in the picture at least for I mean when you talk about qualifying. It's gonna be Stefan Turner Horvath. Like I feel like uh, honestly. Yeah, it's it's Matt Turner right now, yeah. and then whoever is the backup. I mean, you're you're probably Johnson. Hopefully, knock on wood, not going to see them at all 
in any match. So yeah. yeah. Now, do you, now do you think you think Jim was kind of like Greg, like Jamaica's already taken Andre from us. You can't you can't well, take that phrase too, because uh, that would just we would the, be in some trouble. The funny, part, the funny part is that our fourth keeper and I, I always butcher the name too, so I'm not even Ryan, gonna Ryan Jitson, yes. Greg R. Yes, what Justin said uh, <laughs> he is Trinidad and Tobago goalkeeper, but he did not get selected either. So, I mean, you know, wait, wait, wait. was he the goalkeeper when the U.S. I mean, lost? To I Trinidad? can't tell you because I've blocked that out of my memory. I, I, uh, I don't I, know who the players were to them on, on that day. I can't tell you, and I'm not looking. So. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Too. All right, guys, let, let's move forward here because we do have a match to talk about here. Uh, this past Saturday, as Justin was, saw front front, uh, front and center, um, the Union traveled up to Chicago for the second time this season. Soldier Field for a little afternoon uh, or sorry, uh, nighttime uh, match up, up there at Soldier Field. Uh, it was a wild one. It, it was a wild one. And, it, and, you know, it's crazy when the first goal is off of Ellie or sorry, Glesnes is a shin, essentially, <laughs> and it flies right into the net and Chicago's up one to nothing. And and Justin's getting to his seat thinking, like, what the hell did I just miss? <laughs> I had people what texting, did I had people texting me like, you're bad luck. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Like, I was I wasn't even there. I, I hadn't even got like, like I even got in the stadium. Then, and they're like. You, that own goal. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? And and then you get this absolutely beautiful, stunning Ooh. goal from Quinn Sullivan, which we'll talk about in a second because I want to bring that up as far as our – we do have to put it up in the top 10 of union goals of all time. Um, and, and then you get uh, Corey Burke. Yo, Corey Burke is like if, – if for my Flyers fans out there, he's like a, a JVR. He just knows how to put the trash in the back of the net. That, that the, Those little rebounds, anything near the net, he loves to bury that bad boy. So he puts gets us up, up two two to one, and then in the second half, ah oh man, ah oh man, Casper gets a goal. That was that was nice. So that was a nice uh, off, off, off shuttle goal. Yeah, well, well, yes, that the, the, that was. I will say it was a nice place. But we'll, we'll give him that. He bounces yeah, off he, two, he made the two worth. He made and, the run. Yes, uh, but you get two set piece goals by Chicago, <laughs> and that would wind up our match three to three. Now up here, who was it here? Um, I just lost it. Oh, we got now we got a bunch of comments here. Give me two seconds. It was interesting that what you guys. Okay, so in my opinion, mm. Saturday's game was surprising. When I woke up and I saw the score and I saw the highlights, I was like, "What happened?" I won't say it was embarrassing. I will no. say though. If this was later on in the season, let's say like the Union are, are fighting for one seed, Supporter Shield possibly, I'd be upset. But it's the beginning of the – it's still like we're not even at the halfway point, it, I would say. In the first shot at halfway. Just at the third. Just right. at the third of the way through. Right. It, it is disappointing. But I think Jim put it perfectly. Dude, this is the MLS. Getting away, away wins, playing away is tough as it is. Um, I will take this, I'll take this point. And I will say I believe the Union will, will learn from, from this performance here. Um, uh, I will, I will, I want to ask you guys, like, how are we feeling? I will start with Zach on this one. How you, how'd you feel after that match, man? I mean, it's, it's disheartening to defend as poorly as we did, um, for sure. Um, but although I would like to say that in the beginning of the season, I did say that I thought that Corey Burke would be our leading goal scorer. And right now he is our leading goal scorer. Um, <laughs> so hopefully he continues that. So I look smarter than I do on our predictions for the season. <laughs> Um, but that's neither here nor there. The union are in fourth place and I said they'd be in fourth place. Again, my predictions spot on. Um, anyway, the game. Yes. So defending poorly, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Some days you're just off it. Like Justin said, he was there. The field was horrible. Um, so so it's, it's when the field is bad and it's raining, I've said this and I've had this said to me throughout my playing career. It's a great day to be a forward. Because yep. things just go in the net. You hit a ball, it skips, it hits some water, gets in the goalie's face, the ball just rolls in. Crazy stuff happens when it's wet outside. On the flip side, we attacked well. The goal the goal that Casper scored, because I'm going to say that Casper scored the goal, because he did everything else, was <laughs> one probably one of the best goals I've seen him be a part of like in his union career. He did everything right on that play besides you know getting credit for the goal. Um and I mean, yeah, Corey Burke, you know, the trash man. 
he does what he needs to do to score goals. And uh, Quinn ha- Quinn had a moment of brilliance in his first uh, his first uh, <laughs> first real involvement. And um, yeah, it was awesome to see. I mean, so there were definitely positives to take away from the match. Uh, like the guy said, we're a third of the way through the season. Um, so I mean, we there's a lot to build on. There's a lot to right. work on still. Um, again, it was Stuart Finley's first start. I believe. That was a, first that was a draw, Reese. I'm sorry, that was a draw, not a loss. I know it feels like a loss, but it was <laughs> yeah, a draw. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, Stuart Finley's first uh, first start, first get minutes, I believe. Yeah, yeah in, the, in, in the MLS, it, actually. In the MLS, yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, yeah, a lot, again, a lot to build on. Um, and it, it hopefully, hopefully, it's both. Um, like a uh, kick in the tail for for the union to say like we can't do this nonsense anymore, um, but also like uh, look what we did attacking wise. How can we keep scoring three goals a game type of thing? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you there. Um, another point that was brought up here: um, when if when Corey goes, I mean, you still have Sergio Santos, which will probably be put into the lineup. But guys, I know Fontana hasn't. I, I mean. It hasn't been really relevant since the beginning of the season. He did start in that Atlanta match, but you still have Fontana that can play. Wasn't he hurt? There. I think he was hurt. He's still in concussion yes, protocol. I believe, but yes. I would hope that by then he'll be fine. Now, obviously, that's just hope. Um, but we still have him. I mean, uh, you guys can probably say better than me. Gazdak, if need be, could yeah, fill can, in that. He can play a nine. Yeah. So if we do need that, so we should we should be okay there. Um, Justin, how'd you feel after uh, Saturday's match? You were obviously there, so you got you have a little different perspective than we than yeah, we do. So I, as Tommy said, it was a lot of walking on Saturday. It was a, <laughs> you got your steps it, in, boy. Yeah. Oh my god, I think I had like twenty two thousand. It was it was bonkers. Um. So we showed up because of all the rain. Um, and the Red Stars gaming delay, we missed. We got there about 10 minutes in. Um, so we missed the own goal. I took a look at it. That's an unfortunate. You really, that is that is like the the worst of like, on a normal day, that ball's going out for a corner. Like that, the way that, the way that skipped up, that field was, I mean, it was raining all day. That field retained all that water. It was the ball was sticking in places. It was, you know, people always were sliding all over the place. I mean, yeah, initially Chicago ha- had definitely a bit more of the play. Um, that Quinn Sullivan goal, my Lord, that was right in front of us. And it, it honestly it was fantastic. Uh, I mean, I'm the, I stood there in pure amazement, just like, I think my mouth like dropped. I was just like, uh, what just happened? And just started losing our, we lose, you know, losing our minds. Corey, yeah, Corey cleans the trash up as he always does. He, this season, he, he is a goal poacher. And I definitely think, you know, it's unfortunate. I've, I love that he's going to the goal, poach, but I definitely think that's one thing you miss is he has that ability just to get into those dirty areas and just, get it you know he'll slide he'll get in there he'll do whatever it takes to get that ball across the line and you know yeah you had some rough set piece defending on two of those goals um yeah casper really does i mean he creates that goal i I mean from the angle we were we couldn't see we're like that ball went in the net we're like it it has to be an own goal could not see you know it was so quick we couldn't see the deflection uh but in all yeah, is it a tough draw? Yeah, but it's a road draw. I think Stuart Finley looked pretty good, actually. Kind yeah. of in that, that Jack been? slash Mark role of yeah. being the quicker of the two center backs, being the distributor, being able to. I mean, there were a few plays that I thought, oh no, Chicago has a one on one break. They're they're making for it, and Finley. Did not he did not go to ground unless he had to. He stood up. He for, he forced players wide. I mean, there was one. It was a one on one, and the guy had so much field. And all of a sudden, you just see Stewart just kind of slowly fade him to the left side of the field, outside the box, steals the ball right off of him, and takes it up and and just re- recycles the play. It 
I I liked what I saw from from Finley. Um, I, I think you know throwing. You knew when it was it was two two. You're like, okay. I, that's when Jim was like, you know what? Let me see if I can try to get a a, a win. Like if not, it it's whatever. And you could definitely see Gaz Dag and Baizo. Who? Yeah. And and, and Jamiro, Oh my god, those three. Are working so well off each other. I mean, Gazdag yeah. and Jamiro. There was a few where you'd have. I mean, let's see, yeah, Jamiro leaving a back heel pass, you know, without looking, and Gazdag knew like they were on the same page. And I'm curious. I think Gazdag gets the start in the next game. I hope so. But you can see him and Montero. It's going to be very tough to keep them off the field, and I think. Again, I said this. It creates the best of situations where who do you put in the midfield? I mean, right now, Bedoya potentially coming back is, is going to be big. But you have all these options. You have – it like, okay, yeah, we're losing Corey and we're losing Andre and we're losing Alvis. But you have so many options. It's like this team hasn't even scratched the surface of what I think they're capable of. And – Right now, I mean, right now you're a th- round a third of the way in, and you're in third place. Yeah, that's not bad at all. I'd say, given the way the season started, right. <clears throat> especially with you know all the stuff with with you know after, with after Champions League, I you would have you had told me third place by the end of June, I would have said, yeah, okay, like I would have been pretty set with that. So, yeah. not the not the best of games, but hey, a road point is a road point. Right, you just right. gotta go. Eh, it happens. Let's happens. yeah. Let's focus on the next one. Yes, sir. Tim, anything to add on there? Um, I mean, you guys kind of covered the match. I will say uh, the the one main issue for the Union has been their set piece defending. Uh, it, the Union, as a defensive team, are top four in the league. Like stats show it. They they allow less than a goal per game. Um, right. In, in the last two matches, uh, or two away matches, I should say, uh, they've allowed five goals and four of them were, or no, sorry, three of them were from set pieces. Two of them were own goals. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's pretty crazy. And then when you look at, you know, what they've done at home to, uh, both of those goals against Miami in the first match, those were set pieces, uh, really the only goals that they let in that weren't from, you know, lapses on set piece defending were the game against New York city where you have a red card and it's just a uh, crap fest anyways uh and then the one one draw against new england the it's just a goal against the run of play uh, those are the only goals the union have conceded this year that's right. only 10 goals they're a very imagine? good defensive team and if they can get set piece defending right there's no reason they shouldn't be higher than third place right uh, and i i think after seeing what has happened over the last week um with you know game in atlanta you know tough tough own goal set piece defending not good game at Chicago, set piece defending, not good. Now going to Nashville, uh, Nashville haven't lost at home. They've shown that they have a good height advantage when they go for set pieces. Yes, sir. The union need to kind of get on that. I know we'll talk a little bit more about the Nashville game later, but that that's the biggest area that they need to improve on. Um, and that's was one of my biggest takeaways from, from the game in Chicago and, and that it was also the third game in seven days. And you could tell even with all the rotation – the players who had played were tired and the players that came in while they still were uh, very good players and serviceable, there was a little bit of a lack of cohesion in the way that they built play up on transitions. So when you get a a lineup, that's maybe more your best 11 back again, you know, full week of training and you can roll out your best 11, which I think the union will do in Nashville. uh, Then you might see more of that, fluid attack even after they scored three goals in Chicago they might even be able to get more uh but yeah it just comes down to to defending set pieces well and not not losing your mark or not having that little lapse of concentration in the most important moment so I'm going to throw this uh question to to Zach so today during Jim's presser um you know shouts to Joe Tanzi brought up the point uh a lot of I mean there's t- there's tape on the union there's plenty of tape on the Philadelphia union now uh, you know, a lot of teams are throwing a lot of three and five back sets. And, and the, the, the point is this union midfield, who we, we've been talking about a lot over the past couple of minutes, is pretty damn strong. 
what what are your takeaways, uh, Zach, on on just teams, you know, trying to throw throw off this diamond that we have, this deadly diamond? I mean, so I, I really think the only way you you kind of combat the diamond with midfielders is with your own diamond, because um, it's hard to defend. Like even if you have a five back, like you're not manned up in the middle, which is ideally what you want. Right. Like, because that's the easiest way to, def- like, if you, especially if you're pressing, which most teams in the MLS like to do, they like to high press. Um, so with the union, the, the way that it works is like Montero kind of floats around. If he's not at the 10, if he's playing that like left center mid role, he kind of just like floats around on like the left wing inside a little bit, whatever. And then, so usually someone picks him up, but then it kind of leaves Bedoya the ability to kind of go down the wing if he wants or cut or tuck inside, depending on what the other team's giving them. And like if Flock's playing the defensive midfielder or, or El Brujo, doesn't really matter. He's usually free because teams aren't playing with the diamond. So no one really picks him up. So he's kind of free to bumper ball back to the center backs if he needs to, or spray it out wide to the outside backs or wherever Jamiro is. Um, and I think like now the five back slash three back is becoming extremely popular. And it, it's because it gives teams so much fluidity and, and attacking options. But again, it, it, it as much as it is difficult to deal with when you're defending, it doesn't really solve the issue of a diamond in the middle, which like I said, is very hard to deal with unless you also go with four in the middle. Like pl- teams will play four four two, but those outside mids don't really tuck in. They don't really like tucking in because obviously that's why they're outside mids. And their job is more so let me cover Baizo and let me cover Wagner because if they start making runs, that's my job, not really the outside backs because the outside backs then have to deal with Jamiro and maybe Bedoya, or if whoever's playing the 10 flares out wide, they have to deal with those guys. So it really does cause issues when you're, when you're trying to press and when you're trying to defend, unless you, like I said, man up uh, one for one in the middle. Those are really good points, and we're just going to have to keep figuring it out too. I mean, you know, we do know that Jim can be tactical, flexible, not over the last two years really, but – we all remember the Jim four two three one that was constantly thrown out there uh, before the Ernst Tanner days. That was more of an Ernie Stewart requirement, though. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, Tim, what I wanted to throw at you, obviously, the second goal of this game was yeah. an absolute beautiful, beautiful goal. Um, where do you rank this Quinn Sullivan bicycle? It's it's really hard to to think of a spot. I mean, it. it obviously deserves top 10 just because of the narrative alone. I mean, it's, you know, the kid's first goal in MLS and you find yourself totally free in the box on a corner and you can kind of set up a, a scissor slash bicycle kick and, you know, hit it perfectly and then get the reaction from, from his teammates. That was my favorite part was seeing the different reactions of the players, seeing Jamiro Montero hold his head like it's about to fall off. Jack Elliott's jaw was on the floor. Like it it was a crazy, crazy uh, moment there. And I would say, I mean, it's top 10. I I don't know if I can really rank it over some other goals. Like maybe uh, obviously the, the playoff goal against Red Bull has to be up there. The, throwing it back to way back, uh, Carlos Ruiz uh, hitting yeah. that ball first time and, and scoring uh, back when I believe it was 2012. Um, or, uh, oh, yeah, uh, and uh, even um, Corey Burke's goal against New England might be a little bit higher to secure mm-hmm. supporter shield, uh, I, I think. I, I'm more of a narrative guy, so if it's, if it's a goal in a big match, I think it's over Quinn Sullivan, but because it's his first goal and the style of the first goal, I say it's top 10 right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, come on, Tim. It's about the vibes. It's about the no, vibes. Signific- it vibes. Yeah, significance over quality, in my opinion. When you <laughs> when you're talking top ten goals for your club, it it always has to be significance over quality. Now, when you're talking <laughs> about top ten goals for players, like if you're just watching a oh, comp, yeah. oh, it's all about quality. It's all about like come on, that's homegrown, homegrown, homegrown on the bike, baby. <laughs> I mean, it's top ten, but uh, that. I think the Red Bull goal is 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 number one for me in my opinion of all time. That was the like, especially like just the the whole game itself was insane, and just yeah. ended on a goal like that was it was just madness. 
As I, yeah, it was abs- absolutely crazy. I mean, obviously, we talked about Jim's celebration. I, I absolutely love that. I, it's it's funny because like kind of the way he treats the young kids, like he'll be like kind of like that serious semi cold guy, but deep down, man, he he's bursting up like we are. We all are. Like I know deep down inside, Quinn scores that goal. He's just going crazy. But he's a he's, proud dad. He's a proud. Yeah, dad. He is oh, a yeah. proud dad. Honestly, yeah. the only the only time I've seen him go crazy, crazy for goals are when center backs score. So, oh my god! <laughs> if you're, if you're going to be a goal scorer and you want a reaction from Jim Curtin, you just have to be a center back. That's what yeah. you got to do, man. He's yeah. Center back love. No one loves the center backs besides Jim. Yeah. I was I was hoping he was going to pull out the uh, the Zidane cell when when Bale scored the bicycle kick and he went. Oh with my the- god! <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely 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 awesome. Uh, it was a wild game. We walked away with the point, and you listen five points in what six? We been playing six days. Was that what it was? Seven, seven, seven days. Seven days. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. By all means, I'll t- definitely take that. You didn't lose at all. It's def- definitely a win in, in our books. Unbeaten but. streak since the beginning of May. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. Remember the panic loss, in the beginning of the year? The last loss was that New York City game. So, Oh, God. Season's yeah. over. We can't be in or Miami. It's done. <laughs> look, at, look at us now. All right. Well, guys, so from one football stadium, an American football stadium, an NFL football stadium, to another NFL stadium, because now we're Philadelphia, you need to take our very first adventure to Nashville, Tennessee. Bachelorette USA. Huh? You guys <laughs> ready for this one? It, yeah. it, it, it should be fun. Fourth of July weekend down in Nashville. I mean, Jim today in the presser mentioned it's a party city. So yeah. Yeah, we'll see how much of a party a, it'll feel like. I heard there's a significant uh, contingent, yes. like 50, 60 Union fans. Yes. Uh, being go. led by Shout our... Our travel director, uh, Heather. She's uh, shouts to Heather. She's going sure. down there. So I, I heard it's supposed to be pretty legit. Um, yeah, it's listen. Oh, uh, but besides the stuff on the pitch, Nashville is definitely a fun city. Now, the three, the three of my co-hosts here know I absolutely despise country music. I can't stand <laughs> it. Um, but even so, the country capital is still pretty fun. Lots to do there. So if you're a Union fan. Just go down on the strip. You'll find something to do down there. But um, I, kind of before we get into this, guys. So, guys, this is our first match with Nashville. So this is kind of a little bit of a history. Um, what are what are your takes on Nashville so far as a team? Like, what was your initial thought when they became an uh, MLS expansion team to now being in the MLS? And we'll start with Tim on this one. Yeah, I mean, uh, seeing them come up through USL and then right. becoming uh, an MLS team. Um, you know, they did it the year after Cincinnati did it, and there was that rivalry that they had there. So it, it almost seemed like they were copying them. I'm kind of upset that it, that rivalry hasn't really carried over to MLS because I enjoyed uh, watching USL back in the day when it was uh, Cincinnati Nashville kind of fighting for the top, and now they're you know not not there in MLS. They're not at the top. Uh, Nashville, they had a good first season with the expanded playoffs that we saw last year. They made the playoffs. They won a playoff game against the a poor inner Miami in their first season too. Uh, and yeah, I mean, they're, they're a good team defensively sound. Um, they, this year they've played a lot of games at home. Uh, they've played seven games already at home. Uh, and so it'll be their eighth. They haven't lost uh, at home either uh, three wins and four draws. So it's going to be you know a tough match for the union, but I think, the Nashville team right now being 10th place, kind of middle of the pack, you know, not really looking like they they could push for playoffs, but at the same time, it would be lower, uh, you know, that maybe that final seed to get in. Um, but yeah, they, I don't know. We, we haven't seen the Union play them yet. Uh, you know, what that atmosphere is really going to look like. I, I've caught some games there. And I mean, honestly, it, it Reminds me of MLS 2.0 with the football stadium. While it can get loud and it can get rocking, it's not like it doesn't look like Atlanta to me. Uh, so it's it, no, it doesn't give exactly. that feel. Uh, but it, yeah, the you know Nashville fans love their sports, and if they can gravitate to to this soccer team, uh, you know, props to them and and to MLS for getting another team in uh, in the actual South, not just in Florida. So yeah. Well, that is an interesting point too. I mean, obviously, when Atlanta went, got became a team. You know, I felt like the MLS was just like, okay, so if one soccer team can work in the South, we should try to find a way to make other uh, Southern t- uh, towns or cities become good soccer towns. So, I, if I feel like they were trying to do that here with Nashville, 
And I'm not saying like they, they've they've been bad. Obviously, like they had a good outing last year in the MLS Cup playoffs in their first year. Um, but it, it's it's definitely interesting how like the, it kind of all started for them. You know, you guys remember when they released that logo? We all were just shaming it to to no end. <laughs> and I, I it's, even to this day, I really don't even care for their logo um, or their shield or whatever. Um, but it, it's it's definitely a town that you need to take advantage of um, when the Titans are good. I'm trying to think of the other. Oh, when the Predators are good as well, that 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 city's alive, and you yeah. you know the party vibes that are down there. So they're hoping that Nashville can definitely do the same. To your point, yes, they need to get out of Nissan Stadium. Like I was, for all highlights, dude, the corners you see the Heineken like mm-hmm. all blocking off the stands. That's just a bad look. It really is just a bad look. Um, and and last year during the playoffs, you're seeing the 30 yard line in a playoff game. Like yeah. well, I don't want to see NFL 30 yard line, 50 yard lines, uh, in in, in MLS Stadium. So. Um, I, I have high hopes as far as making this work. We we are getting a tricky business when you're talking about expansion. We got a lot of teams in this in this league, and and we'll we'll see how how the, how that can definitely work. Uh, Justin, what are, what did you think of uh, Nashville so far come in this league? Um, they they definitely have an identity which yeah. is defensive. I mean, they don't give up many goals. They also don't score many goals. <laughs> uh, like that's it, it's the you know teams like that live on a very fine margin. That you're like if you're if they're down say two nothing, they've shown that they can come back from that. At least this season, they they've been scored on early. They had you know, what I think of three games where they've come back from two nothing down to for, to to get two two draws. Uh, I know against Montreal. I know against Cincinnati. And I know against Atlanta. Uh, if I've missed any, please let me know. But I, those are the three that I know of off the top of my head. Um, yeah, they have a very def- defensive identity. Now, I have to imagine that this is probably the last game for Walker Zimmerman before the Gold Cup. I would think so. Yeah. Um, but you know he's going to be the back. You know Joe Willis, that center back pairing of uh, Dave Romney and, and Zimmerman has been pretty good for them. Uh, Daniel Lovitz, you know, PA zone, Daniel Lovitz. Uh, they, you know, trust me, MLS does not forget to mention that every time he it's around, but he's been doing pretty well. Uh, I, I'm not sure is Alistair Johnson. Did he make Canada's gold cup roster? He's been pretty good for them. Uh, he was a draft pick last year. I missed that. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, he's a, he's, they have a pretty good back line. Uh, 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 I I how was it? Tim's 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 other twin, Dax McCarty. Yeah, uh, has been patrolling that midfield now. Uh, after being a you know a while in in Red Bull, has bounced around. Was in Chicago and has been in Nashville the last few years. And he's been a very good presence. Him and Zimmerman have been a very good veteran presence for that right. team. Um. Big pieces. I know Anibal Godoy definitely he roughs out that midfield. He's a very El Brujo like player, uh, not afraid to get physical, not afraid to make his, his a statement out there on the field. And then the forward line gets interesting. Um, Cadiz has has kind of been hit or miss for them. Um, Mukhtar has shown he can he can score a goal or two. Uh, Leal has been okay. Like they have a lot of players that have been okay, mm-hmm. but nothing that's really stood out. Um, and I, I, they have you know former Union, you know one the leading goal scorer, I believe in Union history. CJ Swamp. He's uh, not. He's not leading in Union number two, history, but he's he's up there. He's know, not especially really. two still exists. So put some respect on Seba's name. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I wasn't sure. If, I, re- I was trying to remember if it was. He, uh, I think he's top two. I think he's the second. Right. Casper's uh, getting close now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, he's absolutely. But I, I I think with Nashville, like I said, they don't give up a lot of goals. They don't score a lot of goals. So they operate, again, very fine margins. So it's going to be a very defensive battle. It's going to be a very ugly battle. And I'm kind of curious – about how like it's going to be which team gets that counterattacking goal. I think that's how like I know Nashville likes possession, 
but it's both teams are going to kind of be set, and I'm curious who what which defense breaks first, if at all. Yep. Absolutely, um, Zach. What do you what do you think about uh, Nashville here? Um, well, like they like the guy said, they are uh, a very defensive team. Sometimes they uh, they don't defend too well early on in games. They like to go down and come back, um, and they love a good tie. They love a good <laughs> tie. They um, so far this year they have what six ties? I think it is one, two. Will be two more than a hand. I might it's a draw. Four, only four, hold on. Let me see. Um, and a majority of them being two two. Um, it's very yeah. It's very weird the way that they uh, yeah six draws so far this year. Um, and I mean, yeah, the attack is very inconsistent with them. Um, but they they do better at home. Um than on the road. They haven't won a game away so far, and they haven't lost a game at home. Uh, so that's kind of how their season's been. I mean, they've only lost one game all season. Um, so it, it, it's it's going to be interesting going down there because I, I don't know how well we match up with them because we I don't think we really want the ball, but then again, I don't think they really want the ball either. I think we both really thrive <laughs> no, on it. No, you have it. I, I yeah, I really think we both thrive on counterattacking. Um and so it'll it'll be an interesting dynamic. I think I honestly think it's gonna be another draw. I think the union will get okay. a point down in Nashville. We'll, we'll get to um, that prediction in a second there, man. But but I, yeah, I think it's gonna be a very interesting game to watch to see how tactically both teams decide to to play it and uh, how much they really want to keep, like who has possession more um, if they, yeah, it'll, it, it'll be a weird one. I think, I think it's definitely going to be a weird one to see how these teams in their first matchup really, really uh, match up against each other. I agree. I agree. Well guys, you know, what better way to find out about Nashville than to ask a Nashville fan, right? So guys, without further ado, please welcome one of my fellow parceros down in Nashville. Welcome. Harold Villalobos. Hello, what's going on, my brother? You gotta unmute yourself, my man. Oh, there, there you go. go. Hi. What's up, guys? How you guys doing? Hey. Good, man. How you feeling? I uh, feeling good, man. Just got out of the gym. Hey, in, getting that pumping. Putting a couple, yeah. Putting some workouts. Get ready getting ready for that tonight, call you know? up, huh, Huddle? Yeah. Oh yeah, you already know. Always ready. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if they don't have if. La selección don't got hammers, you know. They gotta oh, call man. me up there. <laughs> up there. <laughs> yes, let's go. I love it. I love it. You, you, tú ves a hammers. Hammers is out here in New York. He's out in Mets and Phillies games. He's he's hanging out right. with KD. He's hanging out with Falcao in Miami. Yeah, he's all over the United States, man. That's crazy. <laughs> he needs to be in Nashville, no? And right <laughs> in Nashville, in the honky tonks at some point in a pedal tavern. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, man. How do, uh so last year um, we 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 spoke uh, in the in the MLS is back. Obviously, you guys could not compete in that tournament, which which kind of was a big blow for you guys in your first year. It was a weird year as it was. Um, and it, uh, it was a great interview, and it's great to finally talk to you again. Um, how's it been? Like you know, obviously some normality's coming back. You guys are actually going to matches as we lost Huddle. Um, but it, it just, it, it sucked for Nashville. Like you guys remember it was their first year, uh, and then COVID happens and then MLS is back and then they can't even play in the tournament. And that was an absolute blow there. Um, I, I would have loved to, to have seen, uh, Nashville in, in the, um, in the MLS is back tournament, especially how crazy that went there. But, um, as Harold is back now, <laughs> How do, uh, what did you what did you uh wh how's it been in, in Nashville matches now how's the vibe now now things are a little bit normal. oh man what a vibe man it's, it's it's pretty amazing I mean it's it's been I mean I'm not gonna say we're packing the house because we're we're in the uh, Nissan Stadium the Titan Stadium and it's yeah, like seventy thousand people right <laughs> um so but I mean we're consistently getting up to twenty thousand people in there uh it's that's good. It's, the back line just crazy uh atmosphere from the from the get-go right before the game the 
tailgates have been amazing. Uh, just a whole great vibes all around, you know? Uh, How's the even, city accepted them? Or uh, how they, they been, reacted toward them? You know, at first it was it, – Nashville's weird with, with sports, right? With Nashville, um, we – tend to be skeptical at first, like how we did with the Predators. And as the city gets to know the team and um, pays a little more attention to them, uh, the, the love for the, for, for the, for the uh, franchise starts growing, right? Uh, but we already had this team uh, before uh, in USL. So there was already like a, 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 kind of like a stepping stone on, on the um, supporters uh right. just vibes over here uh and we just picked up from that the, the city i mean everywhere you go now you you'll see something nashville i see it's it's pretty crazy i mean uh, That's good we to see. would have never thought about this like how, how crazy the city has accepted the um the the, the team it's been great that is awesome man that is, that is that is what you want to hear for sure um how what, what are your takes on this team this year in 2021 what, what's been good what's been bad how are you feeling so it's it's been a weird year, right? Um, just just with the performances, uh, say almost same thing as as the beginning of last year. Lackluster in in, in the offensive side, um, just stout uh, defensively. I, I I would say, it, 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 but we, I, I, how, how would I say this? We're not lackluster offensively, right? We're we, we're just not putting the goals inside the net. Uh, we create the most chances. I think. Well, I think we're second yep. in the league right now, creating chances. Right? right. Something you crazy actually, like that. Like, for you actually, yeah, you got you're number one in creative and creating big chances, but also number two in missing those chances. Right. Right. I mean, and, and I think you guys are towards the bottom in creating, but maybe top in actually scoring those chances. Right. So yeah, it, it, around. Yeah, yeah. So, cool. Something like that. Right. So it, yeah. it, it's kind of um, a bit of a, um, a, a tell two teams is the best we can write. Um, and and it's, it's, it's going to be great. It's going to be a great show. And I, I think with, with Nashville, just we need to start winning games off break. We need to be the one scoring first. After, after Nashville scores, if, if Nashville's ahead, we, we don't let that lead go. Um, and that – Unfortunately, it doesn't happen too much, right? Um, we are always playing from behind, and that forces us into maybe taking all these chances, and just the, the quality and finishing just hasn't been there. Um, I think that the fight in this team has been tremendous. I mean, all these comeback victories and, and, and mostly yeah, draws, resilience. right? <laughs> right. It, it's got to start great. somewhere, Hada. Pretty amazing, yeah. Uh, we gotta start. Yeah, we gotta start somewhere. A lot of draws, a couple, couple dubs. You know, one yeah. loss well, that that speaks a lot of the team. You know, like well, even when we're down, we're willing to make that up and, and, and take take that point away. Um, but um, yeah, it it's been it's been a roller coaster for sure. And uh, not only that, but I mean, like the comebacks have uh, the, a lot of these goals have come in um, just right at the end. I mean, last minute, last two minutes. It's been crazy. Uh, noted. We had to play a full ninety minutes. We'll, we'll let Jim know that one. That for sure. Uh, <laughs> right, Hano, right. Lastly, uh, what do you think is going to happen on Saturday night? Give us your thoughts and your prediction. Oh, I mean, I, I, honestly, I think it's going to be a shootout. Um, I, I think really, Philly, uh, yeah, I, I think Philly comes uh, comes in gets like that diamond right. Um, so I, I think it's it's uh, it's just going to be it's going to be pretty crazy. I think the. Um, Attacking for Nashville, I think it's, it's, it's going to score twice in the first half, and then there's going to be a comeback, uh, a Nashville-esque comeback from Philly, like that did last week, right? Um, and uh, it come back to two-two. Nashville wins it right in the ninety-six minute <laughs> goal from Walker Zimmerman. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least he didn't say CJ Sapon because I don't think. Oh, I don't think God, I that would have been dagger. That would have been dagger. <laughs> uh, CJ, CJ gets the brace in the first half. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, Otto, Otto, Otto. Well, listen, Hado, we really appreciate you uh, coming on here. What we're going to do is we're going to put your uh, Twitter account in the comments. Guys, please go follow Javier. Uh, he, oh, sorry, Javier. Hado. 
He's a great Nashville supporter, part of uh, Parceros Nashville. Um, and, and Harold, honestly, it's, it's truly a blessing to see you again. Uh, we semi survived COVID. Obviously, you know, the finish line, it feels like it's almost there, but, you know, we still just a little bit. But I hope to uh, hopefully to finally meet you in person, my man. And keep, keep el, el, la raza colombiana muy fuerte allá abajo, papá. Absolutely, bro. Maybe I'll see you. I'll see you guys in Philly. Oh, Papa, you're always man. welcome here. All you guys are always welcoming. You got honestly, Nashville. I've had some really good encounters with online. You guys have been nothing but uh, class. Uh, not only seriously. online, you guys better come over here if you guys can make it. At the our, our tailgate is open to everyone. Uh, so we'll let them know. Yeah. Out. Hey, I got nothing but luck. I got, I got, I got some, uh, some, some airline credits to use from last year. <laughs> hey, uh, come yeah. by, hit me up, man. Oh, uh, how do we? We got a good. We have a good contingency going down there. Sixty, right? Yeah, Justin? Like, like 50, 60 people. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be pretty. From what I've heard, awesome. it's supposed to be pretty big. Give them that southern hospitality, awesome. but not, not in ninety guys. minutes though. Yeah. <laughs> Harold, until next time. Thank you guys time. for having me. Of course, thank Absolutely. you. Thank you guys. See you guys. Peace. Harold from uh, Parcelos Nationals. Great talking to him. Um, all right, now, now to you guys. Now to you three knuckleheads, Zach. Give me the prediction. You, you you started alluding to it, but give give me your, uh, your thoughts on the match. Yeah, so like I said, I think it's going to be uh, kind of a feeling, uh, feeling each other out kind of game, see how each team wants to play against each other. Um, I think it's going to be 1-1. Um, I think that uh, the – I think Nashville scores first and then the Union do come back. Um, but I think both goals happen in the first half. And then the second half is kind of um, just kind of locking horns and uh, a conflict, a, a conflict of styles um, that really kind of just keep it keep it at a stalemate. Okay. What about uh, what about you, Justin? Uh, I am I am not going with with, with Harold's uh, high flying prediction because that literally contradicts like everything that the stats would show which is that this may may not and probably will not be a high scoring game um i'm going a 1-1 draw i just it's going to be a very ugly game i don't have any confidence that this this this, this is going to be a, a a knockdown drag out you know two teams that both can be defensive but Seem, seemingly play a, a slight bit different. Um, yeah, it's gonna be who wants the ball less. Like uh, they, despite Nashville being somewhat of a possession team, they don't love having the ball as much. Yeah. Um, so it'll be very interesting. I do think uh, Gazda gets to start. Um, I think your 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 diamond could is definitely probably going to be Gazdog, Jamiro. I could even say. Leon and then Abruzzo starts. Um, he could. You know what? Yeah, that that would be that would available. Be, that would be an insane diamond, by the way. That just be very interesting to see how that talent. works out. Yeah, it, it, it's it, there's so much offense and yet so much defense in that. Like, I think that midfield would definitely allow Gazdog to to free up be a lot more. Uh, offensive minded because you have at least half that midfield is going to run their ass off and, and and play behind the ball. So I definitely think that'll be interesting. But it's Nashville, a team that does again to does not score a lot, does not give up a lot of goals. So one one sounds about right. Okay, okay, it's it's gonna be the battle of the center backs, Romney and uh, is his name Romney, right? And uh, and Zimmerman versus uh, Ellie and Glazes. I would assume Jim's gonna go with. Should be fun. probably back to that. Yeah, yeah. There can only be one good pair. Tim, what do you think, man? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm with you guys in thinking that it's going to be a really closely contested match. Uh, but I think the Union are going to field their best 11, which for me, I mean, we already know the back line is what the back line is going to be. And we know the forward pairing right now is Casper and Corey. But I think the midfield diamond, the best 11 for me is Flock at the six. Uh, Bedoya trained today. I think he comes back in. And then you have Jamiro on the left and Gazdag at the 10. And I think if those guys are out there for the majority of this match, then the Union's going to score two goals on Nashville, even in Nashville. Uh, Let's we've, go. We've seen that Nashville, that while they're a good defensive team, they also have let in a good amount of goals this year. 
So I have the Union actually winning this game 2-1, uh, getting back to their winning ways here. Uh, again, it's it's all narrative for me. I love thinking of these things and seeing how close the Union are to the top of the East again. If they get a win and then some of the you know, Orlando or New England start to drop some points again, like we saw New England drop points against last place FC Dallas in the West, like if, if they drop points again, Union or what, or they move up to second place with a win. So – that's why I'm, I'm going with that. I think Jim is going to roll out his best 11 because with the Cup now coming up, you're not going to really have a chance to see what this best 11 really looks like uh, for another few weeks here. So I said 2-1 win Union, close game throughout, but they get they get the goals to win it. Tim, on top of the East is where they belong. It is. I'm, I'm so excited to see this midfield now. Jim actually got me excited about it in the press conference, but just the thought of – Gazdak, Jamiro, Ali, Jose, or Leon. Like these, the options are endless. It's awesome. I'm excited. This 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 midfield is very very gonna be really really hard to stop. There should be a lot of fun. Well, boys, you enjoy that match on Saturday night, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is another episode of Duke by the River. Thank you so much for tuning on in. A quick reminder um, for Duke by the River, the vlog will be out tonight. Yes, that vlog will be out tonight from last Wednesday's match. Uh, it's a good one. It's a good one. There were some, some good scenes. Um, just the thought of seeing everyone back and a normal vlog, it, it was just so surreal. So stay tuned for that. That will be on this YouTube channel as well. Um, guys, please stay up to date with uh, Tim and Zach's articles. And, and now we, we have Steve. We have uh, Steve yeah. doing some articles for us yeah. now too on PSN. Mm-hmm. What, what, oh, yeah. What, 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 what do we got writing, Cobb, brewing up? What can we uh, get people excited with from, from the writing? Um, from the writing, I mean, we're still going to be, you know, covering Euros and uh, right. America as we get into even more the nitty-gritty of uh, knockout rounds. So I'll be having uh, all of those match previews, and I know Zach's going to have the recaps of Copa America. Steve's going to have the recaps of the Euros. Nice. And then as we move forward with the Union, uh, there's, there's a whole lot we can really look into into depth pieces. I know... Steve is uh, really likes to go in depth on uh, different tactics and things like that. And I believe he, he put out a tweet today asking uh, people uh, if they would like to see more articles diving into Jim Curtin's tactics and why uh, it's really working uh, right now for the union Excited and how he's kind yeah. of uh, taken from, from some other, you know, teams around the world, things like that, as he, he brings his, uh, his European influence in uh, on that as well. Um, so yeah, we, we got you covered with a bunch of different articles. Uh, obviously the gold cups coming up. We're going to have some previews on that in the next few weeks. I know Zach and I aren't enough the details on that one. So we'll, we'll have you covered from all aspects. Uh, still working yeah. in a, a piece on, on the U S women's national team here. I know they, they play, they're playing Mexico right now. They're winning. Uh, hey. which is, uh, they're in, oh, yeah. Oh, right long now. Range one. Hey, I'll take that. Uh, and, you know, right, they, they have one more send-off game before the Olympics. So uh, probably around that game, we'll, we'll have an article out talking about their roster for the Olympics to get everyone all hyped up for, for that team as they are the best team in the world. So yes. we're going to cover that. Forever. Always yeah. and forever. <laughs> Always and forever. The best Let's team in the world. Yeah, we're, we're going to cover it from all angles here. All angles. We all angles. So make sure you stay tuned for all that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning on in. Do not forget to like the live and subscribe to Ed Parcero Phil's YouTube channel where we put all the visual portions up on there. Um, make sure to like and subscribe. I'm sorry, make sure to subscribe to PSN Radio and also do by the river. Uh, we have all the podcasts on there. And you, again, you can find those on Apple, Google, and Spotify. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Zach Lobasso. That is Justin, that bald guy on TV Freiburg. That is Tim Discount, Jim Kurt in Loving Good. And I go by the name of El Parcero Philly. And we're telling you guys to dupe on. Talk to you guys next week.